Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. So today that our topic is um, music, the arts of music, I wanted to, to um, for uh, all of us to begin with music, with the harmony of music. So uh, I just asked 50 minutes ago to Gijay if he would be able to connect with all of us to, to start like this. So um, uh, for those who are new here, um, I would like to let you know that Gijay, here present, um, he is the one able to, he is the one in charge of the design and the composition of the music that we use every day for the alignments. Um, so the music that we use for every alignment, every meditation that we are doing since the very beginning is designed done by Gije. Thank you, Gije. <laughs> he just said that, um, that, of course, that as always we do, has been improvised but with a lot of essence everything that that we do <laughs> so he said that we that this, this is it that's it because uh all that we have that we have to to integrate was music um the rhythm the harmony and the melody and all this was inside the song so <laughs> basically that's the the whole information so i hope that we all are in harmony, getting inside this topic of music. A, we will review some of the things that we have spoke about music many times um, uh, last year, but I guess that is important to view, to take a look into this again um, sometimes. And we will add some other point of view, which is the concept of, um, of arts and music as a as a part of the soul um, in Taurus. Hmm? Let's begin by what is the meaning of music? Music, even though we today relate it to songs and to singing and sounds and all that, um, actually the origin, the meaning of music is not related with sound is related with a specific translation that really means high thinking or high thoughts, elevated way of thinking. Hmm? So let's go into why it means that. Music comes from the Greek language, from Musa Eikos, that means Related, because means related, related to the muse. We have spoken about the muses. The muses are these divinities that inspire humans to do beauty, to make art. So they, uh, they inspire them to do literature, to do poetry, to do architecture, sculpture, dancing, and of course, singing singing and playing instruments. So everything that was related with the concept of creativity was related to the muses. So this is why to be related with the muses in Greek language is musike, musike, that is the origin of music. Eventually, this, um, the other arts took different names because Musique is like the whole school of arts. So eventually sounds and singings and uh, playing the um, uh, instruments was much more related with the word music because it's kind of the mother of all the others, the sound, because the word creates, the word singing is, was one of the main bases of all things. So um, the word mu comes from the Indo-European language mun swa, mun swa. Mun 
meaning thinking, to think about something, and swa meaning speaking. So the thought that is spoken, hmm? which means that uh, you are singing, that you are bringing these ideas into the outside. So basically it's creativity, what you have within and put it outside. So moonswa is the, the origin of the word mus. Hmm? And so these spirits will send uh, the music. Hmm? So let's go to what muses represent for the world, for the universe. While Gigi was playing the piano, I wrote this. So, musique means spoken thoughts. So, basically, means the manifestation of all our ideas. Music, because of this, music is kind of the main art that can hold the rest of the arts because it's the one that explains the vibration, the waves. Mm -hmm. So because of these waves, all the rest of the things exist. Mm -hmm. That's why music is kind of the best of everything. Remember that we have spoken many times, the universe is thoughts, is ideas. Mm -hmm. So these ideas basically are a wave a wave in which particles move through, and these waves also can be in different states of vibration. So here we have that the idea, the thought, is basically the wave. The wave is the thought, and then according to the vibration, and then this wave starts to vibrate, and by this vibration we can say spoken. The vibration is the spoken. So Let's say that the wave is the thought and the vibration is spoken. Hmm? That's when we say, and God, the idea, said, let be light. So God, the idea, said. Okay? So this is how we can get the concept okay that instead of saying the spoken thought we can say the wave that vibrates so when we speak in religious terms we will say god said the word when we speak like poetry we will say a spoken thought when we speak much more objective we will say a vibration, <coughs> sorry, a wave vibrates. Okay, is the same. We can say, for example, here. Remember that here we have time and space, the two constants of the universe. Space will be the wave. All this wave, the violet one, is space. And then we have different moments that we have that we call frequency. And that would be time. Okay, so frequency is the time. We spoke about this yesterday. So this wave here, that we see it like the waves of a sea, are called rhythm. Rhythm. Rhythm comes from the word that means flow and or flux. Hmm? To flow. So basically, rhythm is describing how the movement is constant. For example, let's say that this sounds like ta 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 ta. Okay. So we usually can say that rhythm is like the repetition of something. But rhythm is not the repetition of something. It's the constant of something. It's the constant 
so of something. You see the difference? Hmm? The difference of rhythm is not the repetitions, is the constant of repetitions. Hmm? So to, un to see the rhythm as a constant, we can see now the notes and how they repeat constantly in a cycle. Okay, so for example, we have here the one note, which is C. So, dun, 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 dun. and then dun, it repeats itself in the octave. So we have the seven notes. Ancient times, we only used five, which was the pentatonic, but now we have the, the seven. And when, once we reach the seventh, we repeat the same, the same vibration, but in a higher vibration or in a lower vibration, if I go back. So this means that this one here, for example, will vibrate in 220, for example, 220, which means that in the next octave will be 440. It's double. And then this one doubles again in 880 or this one down into 110. Hmm? So it's the same. It, it divides, 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 or multiplies, multiplies, okay, by two. So it's another one. So this is what we call um, to go into another octave of consciousness, to go higher in consciousness. Hmm? This is what it would mean to, to rise up the vibration. Hmm? But this is all rhythm. What I, what I want to say here is that it's a constant. It's something that is constantly happening. Hmm? So then you can use it either way. You, you can use it whatever. But, but this is kind of the constant that, that you have. So as you see here, rhythm is not related with the beauty of the music itself. It's related with the code that helps the music to exist which basically is mathematics, is about numbers and codes and multiplication, division, and all these kind of things that structure and or order the sounds according to the amount of frequencies that we have. This rhythm, this constant, is related, is, is related to um, the amount of the quantity of hertz, which is the, the quantity of time, the amount of time that one note can vibrate per second. So, for example, we have here this one. So it means that when you touch this note, it will vibrate to 220 times per second. Okay? So... The same will happen here. When I, I touch this note, it will vibrate 440, 440 times. Bang, only one touch. Okay? That hurts. As higher the amount of times that vibrates will be higher the vibration, so it will be more acute, the sound. And as lower it vibrates, the less times it vibrates, it will be um, like lower. When we are saying, for example, um, how many hertz is the earth vibrating right now, or how many hertz is um, uh, our bodies or our chest or music, so it will determine in which level of vibration we are. It means that the matter is vibrating, the, the, the chords of the matter are vibra vibrating in that amount of number, like, like um, that quantity of vibrations per second. Hmm? 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz is the range in which humans can hear. Under or above, we cannot hear. Maybe the dogs, of course, the dogs can, 
but for us, we cannot. So eventually in one point here, we start to have many problems and even the year can, um, can explode, okay? Um, so in between this is what we can hear. So important to know that in between this, there's no a perfect vibration. There is no the, the one that, this is the one that we have to use and everyone has to use this one. No, every vibration is useful for something, but we have to figure out which one we need according to what we are doing. For example, someone that is mental, uh, that is working or needs to work with them, will need a certain uh, vibration specifically, a certain amount of hertz. Someone that is living through other or needs to ground uh, in, in the earth will need another kind of vibration of, of hertz, okay? So it's not the good one or the only one. We are working with a 432 because we are on service to the planet and 432 is the one that vibrates with the high heart chakra. Okay, so we are on service on of the planet. Then we do music in that vibration, and that hurts. But it doesn't matter in which one you use it if you know that you need it. Hmm? So now we have harmony. What is harmony? Harmony means together. Together the parts, okay? So... Harmony means uh, which harmony when you have three notes, for example, three different things that you put together and they resound, which means that they sound kind of the same. So because they sound kind of the same, they resound one to another. So they are harmonic, hmm? which means like, for example, you put... Uh, uh, C, E, and um, <laughs> C, D, E, F, G, E, G. Uh, if you have uh, C, E, and G together, you will have resonance, okay? So you have the three in balance, and that's harmony. This is one of the other things that you cannot interpret it normally, but your brain is doing it all the time because the brain is trying to, to get all the information, all the, all the data from the outside in codes, not in melody. Because of these codes that the brain interpretates, we are able to listen the melody. But the only way in which we can relate with this with the, uh, in which we can understand the music is because the brain interpretates this code. They, you get rhythm and harmony, hmm? rhythm and harmony together. So these two will, um, these two will give you the code that something is repeating, and the harmony is that they are resonance. The things that repeat are resonant to each other. Hmm? So that's what the brain is. The brain says, oh, now I'm relaxed that I could get that there are data that is repeating and that is connected to one another. Basically, is, is that. So then we have melody. Melody coming from mellow means parts, parts of something. So melody, meaning parts, means that we have one part, another part, another part, another part, another part. So basically the melody is the interpretation of the unity between rhythm and harmony. This is why we listen the melody, because the brain is in charge to put together the rhythm and the harmony. When they get together, we can hear the melody. So that's why we usually listen to the melody we don't pay attention to rhythm on the harmony. The brain does that. Okay. So now the important thing about this he, is that this rhythm and this harmony is according 
or we interpret it, the brain interprets it according to our own biorhythm and our own inner harmony. And this is how the brain matches with ourselves the music that we like and the music that we don't like. Do you get this? So this explains also how not only music, but also with people, sometimes we can we can't even stand someone speaking or singing or whatever because we are not in the same resonance. For example, myself, I had friends that told me that at the first time they couldn't even listen to me because they they couldn't stand my voice. And um, and uh, it happens to me too with other people that that I like those people, but I can't listen them listen to them because. I can resound with them. So this explains how or why we love to hear some people and we can't hear some people. We love to hear some music and we hate to hear some music. Okay? Because rhythm and harmony are related to our brain. So this happens with people and also, of course, with music. So. This is because the brain is interpreting everything through rhythm and harmony. So the brain administrates that information according to the resonance that they have inside. So if they have some resonance, um, if they have uh, some... Um, uh, so if this rhythm and this melody are resonant with information that we have within, the brain will storage that according to that vibration that we have. So all the codes that we have within ourselves that match with this rhythm and this harmony will be put in the same place or activate the same information. Meaning that when we listen to music people, we start to awake the previous data of this rhythm and harmony that awakens, for example, an emotion, a feeling, an intention. So it's because of the storage in, of the rhythm and harmony and the data inside the brain. So this is this is kind of like killing the magic of music, but actually it's like <laughs> how we interpret that. We humans started to use this. This is the summer of music, but we started to use this in a very natural way in our own evolution through history. In history, we started to evolve using this resonance since the very beginning because we were looking for energy. So we spoke the other days <clears throat> that since the very beginning in the atomic realm, all of us are looking for the balance, stability. So this kind of explains also the looking for the twin soul, okay? Which basically is to look for the other uh, electron or proton in positive or negative to create the structure to, um, to find stability. Um, yeah. So through thousands of years of evolution, we have been designing different ways in which we could administrate that energy within through this state of vibration. Uh, so through thousands of years of evolution in the animal realm, we started to design a way to attract that energy. How? By reproduction. And we use the sound to call the mate, hmm? to call the mate or to make away the, um, the, the others, uh, the enemies. So we started to use sound like a bird singing, uh, wolf barking. So um, we started to, the animals started to use the, the vibration, the sounds as a way 
of calling energy. Hmm? So eventually when humans appear, we started to, to find a tool in a, imitating the nature to see, to, to tell to us what are the best preys or what are the, the, the good places or so on. So we started to imitate the sounds of the animals and nature. And these sounds evolved in what we call words. And the interaction of these words is what we call a language. So basically, imitating the communication of nature, we started to create many languages. So because we were imitating nature, one of the things that we did actually was to imitate the singing of the birds, the sounds of some animals that kind of felt like songs. So we begin our communication by singing. So this made that during the first uh, time of humanity, singing was one of the main ways of communication, to sing aside the fire and so on, hmm? to share information through singing. So to wrap this idea, Let's remember that we are vibration. We are constituted by vibration. So what we can say about this is that this music, this vibration, is living through our own lives. We have a rhythm in our life. We have a rhythm of seconds, hours, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, and we kind of repeat things every certain times. So our entire life is a wave of rhythm. And in this wave of rhythm, we relate with people that we resound with, that we feel comfortable with, and that's harmony. So we start in harmony throughout our rhythm. So that's the basis of our life. And then inside that rhythm and inside that harmony, we discover our I am, our self, the thing that makes us be unique, that makes us be special in all the rest that we will call our melody. Our melody will be the thing that makes us be unique. Hmm? So to understand these concepts of music, it's not for you to go and play an instrument after this is to recognize that when you understand this you can play your instrument in life you can understand how your life works so you can play your symphony we are music made into matter for us to recognize who we are, we have to find out our own music, our inner music within. So in order to discover that, we have to sing. We have to sing, we have to talk and pay attention to our words. We have to share, we have to play an instrument if we, even if we don't know how. We have to play with the sound. We have to create music to pay attention to which kind of music we like, which kind of music we listen to. If we don't listen to anything, so what would you hear? So the task would be to pay attention to the sounds, the music that we receive from the outside and which one we like and which one we don't in order to see in which resonance we are vibrating and after that we start to create our own music from inside in order to to create to find out your inner potential from your soul and it's important to know that there is no the right music 
there are music. And there is a music for each situation and each duration. As we have different hertz, we have different musics for each and for each situation. Hmm? So it doesn't matter how horrible a song can sound for us. Hmm? Is basically music useful for certain things. Hmm? So remember, we are music made into matter. The vibration for today is re. The statement for today is I am guardian of truth. The statement for today is I am guardian of truth. The quote for today is plantae. All multicellular organism covered by cover of cellulose and that produce its own nutrition with a glucose base through the process of photosynthesis, which is synthesizing sugars from sunlight, is part of the complex plant kingdom. Plants are the organisms that have adapted best to our world, self-sustaining themselves, creating their own nourishment and reserves, diversifying into different groups, all autotrophs and with sexual reproduction. This kingdom has the ability of producing not only their own nourishment, but also medicine, and work as a great example of harmony, the enlightenment path. Let's go to the alignment. Sit comfortable, close your eyes, and concentrate in your breathing. I become aware of the space that surrounds me, the body that I inhabit, and my own breathings. Using my imagination, I start to vanish, to make disappear all the objects that are around me, all the things that are in this room, they disappear. I start to become aware of each one of these objects that vanish until I see the walls, the roof, and the floor vanish as well, leaving a deep space void, empty.
And in this void, I set my intention staring at one point putting all my focus on it. As I stare at this point, I take deep breath, bringing all the energy and intention until I see a spark. And this spark starts to expand <coughs> in many others. creating a fire and I see how this fire grows bigger and bigger until I can see the light illuminating my environment and I can feel its heat on my skin. I contemplate this fire. I stare at this fire and become aware that this is the fire of my soul. The fire from where I can build my home, the home of my dreams. Start to take this fire, this heat and light, and softly moving your hands and your arms in every direction as if you are dancing, slowly. You start to build with this fire the walls of this house of your dreams. You start to build the rooms, the furniture, the garden. As I design this house, I start to recognize that this home is me. The rooms are the organs, the kitchen, the heart, the walls are the bones, the garden, my intentions, and the cover is my skin. As I walk around every room I start to sing my truth, to activate it in words or just sounds. Igniting the song of the being that I am.
in me. I have music in me. I have, I have, I have. Take a deep breath. And each one at its own time come back here and now.
And for those who are following the task for this month, put all this energy into the water and pour it to the seeds that we have sowed. Thank you everybody for being here another day here with me. And as always, see you tomorrow at the same time.